that's easy. It's all the crops that are planted, but not harvested for the grain or for income. They need to be plowed down into the field. So can be any kind of cereal, any kind of type of grain, can be a soybean, for example, as soon as the crop is turned into the soil, back to the soil and not harvested. That's the definition of a cover crop, also called green manure or plowed on crop. There is a lot of uh, different uh, use for cover crops. The first one that people are thinking of is the soil improvement by adding, adding um, organic matters. Um, let's say if you plant a cereal, for example, and turn it over, it will increase your organic matter. So help for the soil improvement uh, for the organic matter. But you can also protect the soil um, with, from erosion, wind erosion, water erosion, uh, soil structure improvement. Another one will be nutrient management. If you are using uh, legumes, for example, as a green manure, you can provide nitrogen to your crop, to your next crop. You can also increase the availability of phosphorus with buckwheat, for example. You can also reduce nutrient loss. And the last one that people are not really think of will be the, manage the pest management by breaking the life cycle of the pest. Can be a disease, can be a weed extra. So that's another uh, third big part why we are using green manures. For sure, you will have to plant it and to uh, destroy it. That's the two um, more work that you will have. But there is techniques where you can reduce those uh, passes in your field. For example, if you are using mechanical control, uh, you can seed your green manure at the same time than the last pass of your cultivator. If you are um, a conventional farmer, for example, some are using the last pass of herbicide to plant at the same time the green manure, or the last pass of fertilizers, nitrogen fertilizers, for example. So when they pass the last time in the field, they will just seed the green manure at the same time. Uh, you can, some are also adapting the combine to be able to spread the, the green manure after combining. So there is some technique where you can reduce those work, like workload um, by reducing the number of prices that you are going in the field. The, the main thing is you don't want to have your green manure becoming a weed after. So you really have to um, destroy it at the right time. I will give you an example. Buckwheat is a super great green manure um, because it can scan the phosphorus, so bring more phosphorus into your soil. It can also protect your crop from weeds. It's a good weed controller. But if you pass the flowering stage and they start to come in seeds and you miss the window to destroy the buckwheat, you might have buckwheat for a long, long time after. So, the main thing on green manure is knowing your crop, knowing your green manure to be able to um, have the best management and destroy them well at the right time. So get the more benefit from the green manure, but not having the trouble after with them. And same for, for radish, same for mustard, all of them might have a good management. It makes few years now that we are seeing a lot of increase in demand. So the answer is a yes. And people really would like to, uh, to make a test, their own test. And there is, um, I will say, three different group of people when they turned. The first one will be for sure the people who are sensitive to environment. They really would like to work with the soil health and drainage issues, so they are thinking more about green manure. There is another group of people who are a bit um, concerned about herbicide. The herbicide program are becoming really expensive, and the efficiency on those programs uh, are more difficult. The windows to get the more efficient program 
on herbicide is starting to be hard to get. So they're trying to find another option to reduce those herbicide program and costs. And another group will be for people who are for their own health concern and family health concern. So they also would like to find other solution to reduce those chemical on the farm. So there is some groups and, and for sure, like I said, because we have more data now, because we have more knowledge, uh, we, people are more open to those techniques. And also I really would like to say thank you to those big growers who try this technique with success and just spread the, the word over the place and say, hey, we have success here. And, and we were able to reduce the amount of herbicide of fertilizers, so increase our income at the end of the, of the time. But the story I would, really would like to share with you is about a big conventional farmer were using just uh, soybean and corn rotation. And he follow a presentation, I think it was on cover crops, I'm not sure if it was on cover crops or health, uh, soil health. And he decided after this presentation to try on a 20 acre field, just uh, to put a, it was a, a cereal mixed with peas and the rest of the field was just like the normal uh, rotation. And the following spring, we were really surprised. Uh, the part of the field uh, where the green manure was, the drainage was really much better than the rest of the field. He, he was so surprised that he went to the ditch just to see the drain, the end, and the water was coming, uh, like coming off the field really faster than the rest of the field. So by just doing this small test, he saw a huge difference in the soil structure in just a few months because at green manure, you don't let the green manure for a long time. But just those few weeks helped so much that he just decided to go uh, like bigger on cover crops.